Welcome to Carmel Church. I'm just looking, I was just going to welcome any visitors here. I suppose you're all visiting technically, but I don't think we have any new people here. So, but welcome to you all anyway. You're still welcome, even though you're regulars. <laughs> so, I didn't realise I was leading till uh, just yesterday. So, uh, I, I had a little phrase in my head that came to me a while back that it's never, it's never too late for grace. And that just sent me on a little kind of trip through the Bible, looking you know, what grace is and, and where does it start. One of the things I like to look at is, apparently in, in Scripture, there's something called the law of first mention. And what that means is the first time a word appears in the Bible, it's usually quite significant for that word. Um, so the first time grace appears in the Bible is when Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's Genesis 6 verse 8 and all through the Old Testament usually when grace is mentioned it's when someone finds grace in someone else's eyes um, so but if you think about it we all trace our lineage back to Noah so our heritage begins with Noah and then um, it, our entire journey finishes with grace as well the last verse of the Bible Revelation 22 verse 21 the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen so our entire existence is bookended by god's grace um and up to the psalms it, like i said it talks about finding grace in someone's sight and then we start to hear about ornaments of grace which some people in old king james version language say that we are ornaments of grace um and in Zechariah, this is the first time we hear about the spirit of grace. And it's, that's looking forward to a future time when the spirit of grace, Holy Spirit, is poured on Israel and they can then recognize Jesus as their savior. But the spirit of grace doesn't really turn up until the Holy Spirit is gifted or was gifted to us. And... It is a gift, and, and that's one of the most amazing things about grace. We, we tend to think of it as God giving good things to us that we don't deserve. But it's not only that. It's the, the spirit of grace. It's the power to do good in our own lives for ourselves and for others. That power is given by God. Have you ever been struggling to do something, and then someone comes along who's got the skills or the tools all the time to do it and says, don't worry about it, leave it to me. Has that, has that ever happened to anyone? Or are you one of those people who says, no, I want to do it. <laughs> My wife's grinning at the back there <laughs> because when she's stuck doing something, she gets annoyed and she wants to make sure she does it herself. But some people, we, we can be like that sometimes with, with God when we, we think it's up to us in our own flesh. Um, but God gives us this power freely. It's freely available through the Holy Spirit. He doesn't, God doesn't require great things from us in our flesh, in ourselves. He just needs us to say yes. You've heard the term yes man, haven't you? It can be a somewhat negative thing. Oh, that, that person's a bit of a yes man. They're just, just kind of sucking up to the boss. That's not a bad thing with God. When God asks you something, that needs to be our only answer. Just say yes to him. Because it can't ever go wrong. When we say um, no, or just wait until, or but I can't, or, you know, um, what about this, or that, or the other, or not right now, or, you know, I just can't do it. Those are flesh answers. Those are the answers of someone who's thinking, who's looking at themselves and thinking, I can't, I can't do that, I can't do that. Why would God ask me to do that? When God asks us to do something, we shouldn't look at ourselves and think, I'm not quite up to that. We look at God and think, oh yeah, he can take care of that. Because it's his grace in us that will allow us to do it. That will be the most exciting part of our kind of Christian adventure. Just saying yes to God. 
So if you're prompted by God, don't delay. You'll never regret saying yes to God. And today, he's asking you to meet with him, to come into his presence, to spend some time with him, to just worship him and, and just be in that place with him. So to put all aside the baggage of the week and just be with him, have some time with him. So hopefully we'll all be in that place today. So let's just pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for your amazing, amazing grace. I want to thank you that it's not something we have to earn. It's not something that we ever could earn. But you give it to us, Lord. Not just to put your good gifts on us, Lord, but also to engage us in the process, to give us the power to do things for you. I just pray now as we come into your presence, Lord, we would just be able to say yes to you, spend some time with you, to hear from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you've got to hear me sing if you've not already heard enough of my voice. Like stand and join us, please.
storms of life. You're yes. there. Yeah. You're a faithful God. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that uh, when you left this uh, earth, you sent the Holy Spirit to dwell yeah. with us yeah. and you, to be our, our friend and our guide. Lord, and I'm just so grateful. And I want to give you thanks for this morning for your great love. Lord, I worship you. And I want to give you my praise and my worship because you're worthy. Amen. Thank you.
morning that we can rejoice in our hearts, that our hearts can indeed overflow with the joy of the Lord. And it's not dependent upon what is happening around us right now in our lives, but the joy of the Lord is something that is there, that is imparted through the gift of the Spirit into us. And we are quite right today to be able to say that the joy of the Lord is overflowing in my heart. And, it, and from that joy then will flow praises. And from praises, then that opens the door for the Spirit to flow in to your heart and for the Lord to do things. And so that enables the Lord then to move in our lives and open up those things that have seemed closed down and locked and allow the joy of the Lord to just flow out of your heart this morning and just see the great things that can start to happen and the great things that would start to change and the things that have, that have kind of felt like they'd have been a weight around us or on our shoulders that that can be lifted because the joy of the Lord can just bring something from heaven's glory down into our earthly lives, into our situations, and we can feel some kind of release, that we can feel some kind of power from God. It's not our strength, but it's the strength of God that can pour down into our heart, into your heart today. So let the joy of the Lord fill your heart today to overflowing. And from that, praise his wonderful name. Sing praises to the Lord this morning, for he is worthy of our praise. He delights to hear in the praises of his, of his people. So this morning, don't let anything hold you back or suppress inside you, but let that joy overflow in your heart this morning and just see what happens. See the great things that God can even start to do today. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I will praise you this morning. Give you praise because you're worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, amazing. Hallelujah. Let's sing Amazing Grace because it's His grace, like I said, that saved us. Undeserved as though we are, His grace has reached into our hearts and saved us. Set us free. Hallelujah. Filled us with things that we could have even never even dreamt about. It's the power of God. Pour into our hearts today. Praise His name. It's amazing grace. Thank you.
Morning, everybody. Great to see you. Praise the Lord. Not quite sure what to say this very moment in time because of that many things are just in my heart and I don't know what to, what to say first. But I am so excited that the Lord is in my life and in my heart. Can I make a statement? The Lord in my life is the most important thing over everything else. Over everything else. Of course, our families are important and, 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 and so many other things are important, but I have to say that the Lord is at the top and from that stems through, flows through everything, through our families, and it makes us who we are before the Lord. And so I'm so excited. You know, the, what we're doing here today, we're here in church, you know, and we're singing and we're praising and we're going to share the word together and, and we've listened to some things about God's grace. And this is just a preparation for us to be in heaven with the Lord forever. And, and I, am, I am determined that I, I'm going to, uh, you know, and I want to hopefully convey that to you as well. This is nothing to do with what I'm talking about today, but anyway. Uh, but I am determined to, to absolutely enjoy every moment of the life that God has blessed me with and blessed you with. And filled us with everything that you need. And, and, and so when the problems and the challenges come, and boy, do they come. They come thick and fast. And it would seem to me that if you've, if you've determined, and maybe this is a little bit what I want to share, but if you've determined to serve the Lord in your life, then boy, you're going to have some challenges. And you will have some things in opposition that will want to stop you doing that. But let me not preempt what I'm going to say, but I am I'm excited. And, I, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm just so blessed today. Right. <laughs> How have you gone on with Colossians reading it last week? I talked last week about, you know, about the, you are the vision of this church, you know. The people, you are the, are the vision. You're the future of this church. You know, and what God pours into you through his Holy Spirit will lead us forward into the things that God has prepared to, for this church to do, both in, in, in reaching out and in your lives, in your, in, in your personal lives, in your holiness, in your treasure building in heaven, in, in, in the way that you, that you show people the love of God. It, you, are the, you are the future vision of our church here. And I'm praying that you know that what I'm sharing, you know, for all the last few, few, couple of weeks, and I don't know how long this is going to go on for, but I really believe that God has got some very special things prepared for us as a church, both as you as individuals and as a church, to achieve for his glory and for his kingdom. And so that excites me, that really does. And so I'm carrying on being, this is called Gird Up the Loins of Your Mind, part three. And I really am excited about what God's got to say both to me and, and to us as a church as well. So I've been reading Colossians and I said, you know, we'll read it and that. And I finished up by, by reading it, but I changed it into a prayer. So this is, this is the prayer that I was praying through Colossians. And it's Colossians chapter one. And, and so it was what Paul had written to the people at that, at that Coloss place. But it was an amazing thing that he said, and it's so, so right, I think, for me to turn this into a prayer. So what he said to them is my prayer. Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Lord, I want to live a life worthy of, of you and please you in every way. I want to bear fruit in every good work. I want to grow in the knowledge of God. I want to be strengthened with all power according to your glorious might so that I may have great endurance and patience. I give joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified me, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued me from the dominion of darkness and brought me into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom I have redemption. My sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a great piece of inspired writing that was that Paul sent to those people at Coloss. And so I've been praying that this week. And I'd like just to take another section of what I believe that God was, is saying to me and to us as a church here. And, and as usual, you know, you, I, I think, oh, I, I'll cover that. So the, the second section that I wanted to, to talk about today is, and I'm going to read it, but 
as, as you'll see from what I write after that, I don't get anywhere near through it. So let, let's just say, so the second section of that vision, which is us as his people here, is that this vision is that is both inspirational and achievable, one that takes people and they're not kind of dragged along behind, one that is fresh and reaches out to people through the power of the Holy Spirit, one that is invigorating, motivating, and heart and soul spirit lifting, one that brings a great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God, one that enables us to run and not get weary and, and, and run and not get faint and rise up on the wings of eagles, and to reach new spiritual heights of anointing. So I thought that should be the next section. And so I'm just going to speak now for a few minutes about that inspirational part. Because unfortunately, well, I don't know how I'd say it, but that's the only part that I got that is inspirational and achievable. So I believe that God will do things that will inspire us and inspire each one of us to be part of what God wants to do in you being part of the vision, that you won't be a spectator. And it's easy, isn't it, to be a spectator? And, and it's, I've got to say, it's my natural instinct to be a spectator. I like watching what's going on. But, I, you know, from on the sidelines, and, and not always, maybe when I was a bit younger, I might have wanted to be in the middle of the thick of the action. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to be a spectator. That's my natural position. But, you know, I don't want to be a spectator in this. If God's going to do things through the power of his spirit, I don't want to just watch it. I want to be part of it. I want to be in the middle of it. Could you say, I want to be in the middle of it too? To be full of the Holy Spirit's power. And I started by saying that, you know, when, when Jesus was tempted and then when he came down from the temptation, I noticed something that it said when he, when he went into the wilderness, he said he was full of the Holy Spirit when he went into the wilderness. And then after the devil had done, it, had done his best, he, Jesus came back out of the wilderness still full of the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that, one, that, that part of what needs to happen, and let me just make a, a, clear, a clear point. I'm not, this is not kind of saying that we're not anywhere near this in, in terms of our spiritual level or, or the levels of the, of the anointing that we want. I'm not saying that. I just believe. I've got this thing in my heart, you know, that God's got so much more. So if there's so much more, then we will reach new levels, that new things will happen. So it's not a criticism of what has happened. And I, I'm a strong believer, and, and there's plenty enough older people here today who will look back or into the 80s and 70s and even the 60s, and we will laugh at what we used to do in church. We'll not laugh at it, but, but we do. Did we really used to do that in church? Did we really used to do it? Was, was it so? And we laugh. We laugh at some of the songs that we, that we used to sing. Joy knows them all. If you want to know some of the, of the funny songs that, that we used to sing in church and in Sunday school, ask Joy. She knows about Don't Have a Face Like a Coffee Pot have a face like a teapot and it's bubbling it's bubbling and, and all the things we used to laugh but you know I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm absolutely a strong believer in saying yeah I, I, they are funny some of those things but you know what happened has got us to where we are today and without a lot of those things happening we wouldn't be where we are today and some of them comes through experience and some of them is through learning and some of them is through mistakes as well and so we are here where we are today, but I really believe that God has got to take us to new heights. And the, the key to that to me is to be full of the Holy Spirit's power. Uh, can I make a, a clear statement here? The devil does not want this church to prosper. He doesn't want this church to reach new spiritual heights. He does not want this church to reach out into the harvest field and bring people into God's kingdom. He does not want to see you blessed in your spiritual life. He does not want to see you move into a level of holiness that you've never attained before. He doesn't want any of those things to happen. And I, and I can say in the very, very last thing that he doesn't want to happen is that we get an increase of the filling of the Holy Spirit. You see, because that's something that he always loses at. 
when the devil comes against the power of the Holy Spirit, he loses. And that's what I'd like to point out about <coughs> when, when he went to try and pull the rug out from the mission of Jesus to come as our Lord and Savior. He tried to thwart that plan. But you see, he couldn't come against the power of the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus. And I, 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 I'm not, uh, I, I'm not qualified, you might say, to, to know about the talk. We, we know that the deity of the fullness of, of the Godhead body dwelled in Jesus. And so we know that was in him. But it, it does make the point that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm happy to take that the power of the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus, because also he had, he had the humanity in him as well. It was a bit, of a bit of a hard thing to explain. Maybe that's a subject. Viv can talk about that one day. Uh, and he can, he can expound that, that, uh, that point. But I, 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 I'm fairly sure that Jesus really was hungry. When, he, when the devil said, you know, this is make these stones bread, because you've got the power to do it. But you see, when Jesus was full of that Holy Spirit, the devil lost. And I really believe, too, that when we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, that the devil will lose. And that we can then start to feel the inspiration that that, that Spirit will lead us to. Now, I like that word inspiration because it leads you to, to, to maybe doing more than what you what plan to do. Or it, it, could, it could help you to achieve something that you've already put a limit on that you can't achieve. Or maybe, and, and, I, and it's something, and I'll refer to it about, about the eyes being open, which is what they've talked about. But it opens up your eyes to actually see something that you've not seen before. And then you feel this kind of something rise up inside. Hey, this is achievable. This is actually attainable. I never thought it could be. The devil would love us to be religious. He doesn't, I don't think he even minds us doing church. You can be as religious as you want. In fact, people use religion as a divisive thing to undermine who God really is. And they use it as a tool to unpick the things that the church should be doing. So, I ask a question. If it's what we believe that Jesus came to save us as sinners through his grace, if it's what we believe that we are living now in preparation to be with him in heaven, and if we passionately believe that, then why wouldn't we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why wouldn't you want to be filled with the Spirit? I think about this, and I remember some years ago, I, I, I said to live, live a Christian life without the Spirit, the, the Spirit of God in you is, well, I've got, I've got, I've got a couple of, of things that it would be like. This, the Holy Spirit in us is like the fuel in our tanks. It's like the power in our souls. It's what opens the eyes of our heart to see the great things of God. It enables you to see the kingdom of God both here and now and what's to come in heaven. It's the power of the Spirit opens up our understanding to God's Word. So it doesn't just become a, an amazing book to read, but it becomes the book of life. It becomes the Word of God. It becomes a living thing that illuminates in our hearts when you read it through the power and, and revelation of the Holy Spirit. If you've got an infilling of the Holy Spirit, then this will start to happen. You will start to show certain characteristics like love and joy and peace because the power of the Spirit enables these fruits to start to be shown and evident in our lives. And I have to say, before I say a couple more, is that the Holy Spirit is still working in this area of my life because I've paused at a certain point, and so I carry on. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, and self-control. See, because if the Holy Spirit is filling us inside, then, then some of those characteristics, as I've, as I've said there, they are not the natural response to a lot of things that happen in our lives. Let's be truthful. Uh, I'm not very patient, and I'm not, I'm not very gentle sometimes either. But you see, those fruits there are preempted by a verse. And it says here, it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what the sinful nature crazy is because this, the natural reaction or the natural response is in us, it gives a list before that. Didn't want to read that out because you could, you could read it if you want. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, let me just check. It's in, it's in Ephesians, isn't it? I'm reading it down. It's Ephesians chapter. Uh, anyway, look it up. Viv, where is it? It says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. You see, because it goes on to say this, this Holy Spirit, actually, it, it gives us a new nature in here. And it says the old sinful nature, well, this new one is opposites to it. And sin, we're born in sin, and it explains a few things, doesn't it? And I don't want to get too sidetracked about it. But, but we are, the truth is this, that we are born in sin. And we have an old nature. And the Holy Spirit changes our old nature and, and those list of, of things that are in that verse before the fruits of the Spirit, which sometimes come out. And we like to think, no, 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 none of those things are, are not in me. I, I'm not like what the, those, those verses describe. But I'll tell you, uh, it was Jim Bowler who, who, said, who said this, and I'm sure other people have said it, is that, you never know what's inside a person until they're squeezed. And when they're squeezed, all kinds of things start to come out of them. So when I'm squeezed and I'm full of the Holy Spirit, what comes out of me, hopefully, is those fruits of the Spirit, which is contrary to how I would have been at one time. Also, there's another aspect of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And these are crucial as well to the church and to how the church moves forward and how God corresponds, you could say, or speaks to the church. And it says this in 1 Corinthians. It said, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. And you know, it's funny, isn't it? I've read that so many times, but I've never actually picked up on that particular word there so that we can help each other. It says to one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. And another, the ability to prophesy. You know, these are gifts that we need in operation in our church for the fullness of the vision to start to become what God really wants. And we have got all of these things available to us. To another one, he gives the ability to discern whether a, spirit, whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. See, the devil never stops. I'm going to come to a little bit more about him in a moment or two. But then it says to another person, he's given the ability to speak in unknown languages, to speak in tongues. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the, the ways that we believe that God inspires someone to, to step out in faith and start to speak something that isn't a language that you've particularly learned or, or something, but it just wells up with like you read about it. In, in the Acts of the Apostles there, where the Spirit came down and they started to speak in unknown languages. And then, and, then the, and then to another person, he's given the ability to interpret what is being said. It's the same Spirit who distributes all of these gifts. And he alone decides which gift each person should have. I really believe that these gifts are still available for us to, be, to receive. You know, the, the, it goes on to say that the Spirit is, 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 is to seek after these gifts. And, and, and he goes on to say, now, I want some order in the church, and so I want you to know and, and understand how these gifts can be used 
and we have an understanding that these gifts are subject to our overruling or our control, so they're not like uncontrolled gifts. But I really believe that God, through these gifts, can do things that will enrich our church, that will give us great wisdom and understanding and discern. Would you like to see gifts of healing? Would you like to see things that are happening that are, that are just over and above the normal human physical limitations? Prophecy, special knowledge, faith. Someone can stand and say, I have the faith to believe and bring something that will witness in the hearts of other people. <clears throat> and God has chosen that person to bring that word of faith to our ears. <clears throat> I really believe that these, these fruits and these gifts are what God has made available to us so that we can enjoy the fullness of living our lives here in this world. But I have to say this, that in just the same way that the devil tried to, tried to thwart the mission of Jesus to come and be the Savior. He's still trying to thwart, to stop, to ruin, to bring down the plans of God. A final word. In Ephesians, he says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Now, I, 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 I know this, that the devil has strategies to stop God's people moving into the fullness of what God has for them. When I stand before the Lord in heaven, when you stand before the Lord in heaven. I want to hear, do you want to hear? I want to hear, well done. You've been a good and faithful servant. Now I don't know whether it'll ever be like this, probably won't be, but I wouldn't want God to read a list out, uh, and I'm, I'm sure this won't happen, right? But, but he, I wouldn't want him to read a list out of the things that I could have achieved but didn't because I allowed certain things, I like that word, to thwart it, to stop it, to bring it down, to stop it coming to its fullness. But I want to achieve everything. I don't want nothing to stop God's fullness of his blessing through the power of his spirit in my life and in your life. I don't want anything to stop that, but believe me this today is that the devil will have strategies in place to stop it happening. And so when he's writing these verses here, he says you need to be put on the whole armor of God because you'll then be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. Why? Because we're not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in, the, in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. And then he goes on, I don't, I, do I need to read the armor out? Do I, I'm sure that you know most it's there. It's one of them, it's there, isn't it? it, it somebody's moved it, I'm sure it was there. I'm sure that you'll know about all the peace, but there's a couple of things that it says, be strong in the Lord and put on all of God's armor, not just some of it, all of God's armor. And then you'll be able to stand against all of the strategies of the devil. Make no mistake, we're in a battle. And just as from the beginning of time, the, the enemy has been seeking to stop, thwart God's plan. And he started in the Garden of Eden and he's never stopped ever since. And one of his favorite lines is this, and you say, oh, this old chestnut, it, this old chestnut will say, did God really say? Did God really say? And it's, it's one of the best lines that he's got to take away anything that God could do in your life. Because God can see in you amazing things. The problem we have is that we can't. We see our weaknesses. 
We see our failures. We see all the reasons why we shouldn't, why we can't, why that's an impossible thing. Jesus called him the father of lies. Don't forget that. The devil is the father of lies. And, and I put he will use every trick that's not in the book to ruin your mission, your calling, your place in God. But you see, the thing that he cannot fight against is when you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. When you're standing firm in the fullness of the things that God, and so God has made available the armor for you to stand in. So I, I would say this, that, you, that we could gird up the loins of our mind today, be fully aware of the things that, that we face. Because I want to say, I want to finish, finish on a really positive note. Why? Because the fight that we're in is already won. The battle is already won. Jesus has already defeated the devil, I like this word, at Calvary. Calvary is the cross. That place where he went to, to allow him to, to be beaten and, and his blood to be shed so that we could be forgiven of our sins so that, and that defeated the devil and all his plan and death and hell and everything was defeated so that battle has already been won so and we have already have everything that we need for this life to live this life of godliness so like Jesus who came as a son of God to be the savior it didn't stop the devil having a good old try to stop him. In the same way, we don't need to let the devil stop us achieving the vision that I believe God has for you, his church here, and in the days ahead. So let's be inspired. Let's be inspired. Let the Holy Spirit open your eyes so that you can see things that you can't now see, that could lead you into new places, that we can achieve those things. And so... I only got inspired and achieved on that next part, but I really believe that through the power of the Spirit that can be at work in us. Do you want it? There's no reason why we shouldn't have it. If we passionately believe that Jesus is our Savior, then let's take hold of everything that's available to us and let that power of the Spirit be living and dwelling within us. And then we can be inspired to achieve those things that seem impossible right now. So we can achieve things both in our lives, for his kingdom, for his, play, for his praise and glory, for his church here in Hadfield, and for that heavenly treasure that's being there stored up in heaven for us. So do you want it? Let the power of the Spirit fill your lives today. Be inspired to achieve the things that God has for you and for me. Amen. Sorry, I'm going to go back to this one. Say yes. Let's pray. I, I, I'm just going. I, 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 you know, we used to say, if, if you want to be prayed for, put you know, raise your hand or stand or whatever. And I don't need to do that today because um, I, I think we'd all say an amen in our hearts to say, Lord, fill me to overflowing with the power of Your Spirit. So, would you join me in a prayer this morning? And let's ask the Lord to do something extraordinary in the way that he could fill us with the power of his Holy Spirit. Praise his name. Lord, I, we come humbly before you this morning. Lord, we, we, with all our faults and failings and the weaknesses and inadequacies and everything else that we could put in there, Lord, and we can put so many reasons as to why we couldn't be that person that is full with the Holy Spirit and in, be inspired to achieve things. But Lord, I'm praying this morning. Oh Lord, I'm praying, Lord, that, that our, as, we, as we're before you, Lord, that we'll say yes. Lord, there is nothing holding back that power of the Spirit in our lives other than us. That we could say, well, I, I'm being different to it. But Lord, I'm praying this morning that we'll not be indifferent, but Lord, that we'll say before you this morning, Lord, fill me. It's overflowing. I'm praying, Lord, fill me to overflowing with the power of your spirit. 
Lord, if, if I've not walked in, in that level in the past, Lord, then I, I, I'd apologize before you, Lord. I repent of it, Lord. I, and I say, Lord, let that be something that's behind, but moving forward. Oh, Lord, let me be filled with the power of your spirit. Lord, let it come upon us in a fresh and new way. Lord, let it be the thing that, that inspires us. Lord, let it be that, Lord, that makes us overcome us, that we can overcome the temptations that the devil throws at, us, throws at us on a daily basis. Lord, he would seek to stop us, but Lord, let us become unstoppable in you today. Let us become unstoppable people in the power of the spirit so that we can reach new levels Lord, of, of power and anointing and let those gifts and those fruits flow in new and fresh ways so that, Lord, we can bring glory and praise to your name. And, Lord, that people will be brought into your kingdom. Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that our hearts will say yes to you this morning for more of the power of your spirit that can work in us. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bob, for that word. Um, if I could ask the musicians to uh, come back up and take their places. I thought we'll do the notices afterwards. Um, we'll just kind of do the last song. And then...
to see more of our lives working in accordance with your Holy Spirit. We want more of you, Lord, in our lives. We want more of your Spirit acting and, and moving and doing things in our life, Lord. Pray that you just give us that ability to just say yes, to just accept you, Lord, and to accept your power and to walk in it, Lord. Through this week and the coming days, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we do have some notices. Packed lunches on Wednesday. Um, book with Jill on the number on the screen. And Tuesday is the over 60s meal, and that's a book with Jill on the number on the screen. Uh, bellies not bins on Thursday, a book with Jill on the number on the screen. <laughs> and we've got a few birthdays today. Um, we have uh, my, my firstborn. <laughs> 18 years old today. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> 18 years since that little tiny thing <laughs> turned up and he's not so tiny anymore as you can see in fact is he is he the tallest in church now Just I don't know how tall is Mark <laughs> okay but we do have Pauline and remotely singing for Janice and Audrey we don't have Audrey's not here today is she um, yeah, I don't think he needs to stand on a chair, does he? He's tall enough. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's only Ethan here today, but we'll sing happy birthday to all of those people. <coughs> In the right key. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Ethan, and Pauline, and Janice, and Audrey, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless 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 you. Thank you everyone and I believe tea and coffee are being served out there somewhere. <laughs> 